Well, earlier this year, I got the privilege of going to CIA, which is a Cross-Examined Instructors Academy, right here in Albuquerque. And through it, I got to meet a lot of new people. I, I shouldn't say new people, but people that I knew through the internet that I had had connections with through my ministry and through conversations online and the like. And it was so neat to actually be together in one area for a few days uh, as we did this conference together. We got to talk with one another and learn about one another and encourage each other in our shared faith in Jesus Christ. And I walked away just so uh, if refreshed and encouraged with other believers whom I don't normally get to meet with. Well, this is exactly what we're seeing when we open the book of Romans. As we begin our study in the book of Romans today, we see a shared faith from two different uh, sets of people, Paul and, and the people with him uh, and the Roman believers who've never met one another but are encouraged by a mutual faith. And we're going to talk about that together as we begin our study in the book of Romans. Hi, I'm Pastor Jeremy Bannister of Heights Christian Church, and we're going through the Bible in five years' period of time. If it's always been a goal of yours to go through the Word of God, we invite you on this journey with us. By clicking the subscribe button and the bell for notifications, you can receive a devotional much like this one, where we read just a little bit of the Scripture together and pull one thing from it to help us be more like Jesus. Well, this shared faith is an important reminder. This is how the book of Romans begins and really how it ends as well. So let's check it out as we begin our study in the book of Romans. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh, and was declared to be the Son of God in power according to the Spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead, Christ Jesus our Lord, through whom we've received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the nations, including you who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all those in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints, grace to you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith is proclaimed in all the world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I mention you, always in my prayers, asking that somehow by God's will I may now at least succeed in coming to you, for I long to see you, that I am, it may impart to you some spiritual gift to strengthen you. That is, that we may mutual, be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that I have often intended to come to you, but thus far have been prevented, in order that I may reap some harvest among you, as well as among the rest of the Gentiles. I am under obligation to both Greeks and barbarians, to both the wise and to the foolish. So I'm eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. As it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Well, Paul doesn't waste any time as he begins the, the, this letter to the Romans concerning this faith that they have. And he spends the first six or seven verses really just kind of jumping in and giving a condensed version of the essentials of faith, talking about the promise of God and the promise of God that's revealed through the prophets, the Holy, the Holy Scriptures, and that the Son was coming and that Son was descended from David and shown to be Jesus Christ, both the Son of David and the Son of God. And so what we see is that Paul is giving this basis for this shared faith between him and these Roman believers uh, right there at the beginning. And then he says, I look forward to a time, basically, that we can come, that I can come to you, that I can preach the gospel, that we may be an encouragement to one another because there are other believers 
in faith. And that's an encouragement to Paul to have this whole set of believers that that he didn't plant. He didn't plant this church. This church uh, most likely had its origins all the way back in Pentecost when we look in Acts chapter uh, 1 and 2 where we see the Holy Spirit coming down and the people who are there from all over the world hearing Peter speak in different languages that are there. But what I want to talk about today when we, can, when we th- think about this passage of Scripture is this idea of this shared faith. You know, a shared faith is very important for us as believers in Christ. We need to be around other believers because it encourages us. This whole, uh, this whole section of Scripture that we're looking at here by Paul talking about this mutual encouragement in faith ends with him saying this in verses 16 and 17, where he says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. It's important for the faithful to get around one another, because it makes us bolder for our faith. It's important for us to encourage one another in our faith. The body of Christ is so important. Paul understood this. Therefore, he wanted to go to those segments of the body of Christ that he had not proclaimed the gospel to, even though they knew the gospel. Think about it this way. When we look at the early church in Acts chapter 4, we see the same encouragement for the body of believers coming around one another for the purpose of being encouraged to preach the gospel so they wouldn't deny the gospel of Christ. You know, uh, when we see in Acts chapter 4, we see that uh, Peter and John are threatened, they're, they're punished, they've been imprisoned, and they're finally released. And, but they're threatened not to speak in the name of Jesus anymore. And the first thing that they do is they run to other believers to talk about what happened with them and to pray together so that they might have the boldness to proclaim the gospel of God. Let's check it out together in Acts chapter 4, starting in verse 23. And when they were released, they went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and the elders had said to them. And when they heard it, they lifted their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them, who through the mouth of our father David, your servant, said by the Holy Spirit, Why did the the Gentiles rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. For truly... In this city, there were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, look upon their threats and grant your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness, while you stretch out your hand to heal, and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant Jesus." And when they prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. See, we need to be around one another to encourage one another in our faith so that we're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so my prayer for you is that if you haven't shared your faith with somebody else, that you'd be encouraged to do so today. And if you haven't done it in a while, my encouragement is that that would be a prayer request that you bring to the body of believers together so that we might encourage you to do so and that you might be encouraged and empowered by the Holy Spirit to do so as well. So I hope that helps you this day to stand for Jesus, to walk for, uh, with Jesus, and to share Jesus with others boldly. But do so by bringing that request to community together because it's our mutual encouragement that leads us to not be ashamed for the gospel of Jesus Christ. God bless you. I hope that helps you this day, and we'll talk with you again tomorrow.